Hey, welcome to my channel. I'm a late diagnosed autistic human being from France living in the UK. I make videos about my own experience as a late diagnosed autistic person. And today I want to talk about my childhood autistic traits that were not picked up or, you know, dismissed, disregarded by family, health professionals. Yeah, so I've talked a lot about my autistic traits on this channel in general, uh, but I wanted to make a video specifically about my childhood traits. The autistic traits that were missed, that could have led to an earlier diagnosis and that were missed by the people in my life. Um, and I think it can be helpful maybe to either young people out there who might identify with could be useful for either for young people out there who might uh, relate to my childhood traits and be like hey maybe you know maybe i'm autistic too or for parents of kids out there wondering if their kid might be autistic and maybe not maybe they their kids doesn't have like a a traditional or like stereotypical uh presentation of autism so yeah i thought it could be interesting to talk about that um just as a side note little update i'm still in burnout as some of you might know because i've been making a lot of videos talking about it on my channel but I'm just massively, massively tired. It's almost four in the afternoon. I got up at 11. Uh, I struggle to sleep well. And uh, so I'm, and, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just so tired. I mean, I'm in my PJs today. My hair is gross. I just have so little energy at this point that my partner and I have resorted to um, ordering like you know ready meals from a brand called Cook. I don't know if it's available everywhere in the UK but where we live they stock our our local co-op and so we got to try some of their frozen meals and they're really good and so when we saw that they were they could deliver um, ready meals online we we're like yep that would be a good idea because right now it's like one of the things that we struggle the most with is making food and like cleaning the dishes the kitchen and stuff it's we just have so little energy for that it's gonna make our life easier it's a it's a less costly and healthier option than you know take out or stuff like that because i'm so tired i might you know i might speak a bit more slowly than usual today so don't hesitate to set the um, speed to like one one point one point five or something wow i don't know if i can do this i don't think i have the energy i think i might be too tired to do this video right now i underestimated my energy levels yeah i wanted to make a video about my childhood autistic traits and i made the whole introduction for it then i realized how much i was struggling to even get the words out and i looked at the list of because i kind of have a script for some of my videos it's not really a script but it's like bullet points with all the the things the things i want to cover in each video and i looked at my list and i was like i don't have the energy right now and that's the thing is i'm i'm not used to being so tired so i tend to over overestimate my my ability to do stuff not because i don't listen to myself but it's just i'm not used to being so tired and so i tend to you know be overly ambitious with my my day and what i can accomplish and i and i don't do much i'm in a very privileged position where i don't have to work because my partner has um 
works full time and he has a good job that allows us to to live comfortably with just one one source of income and i feel so blessed because i know there are people going through experiencing burnout out there who have to work and have to look after kids or you know other people in their lives and and they have a burnout on top of that and they have to worry about not having enough money to eat or pay the rent and i can only imagine how awful that must be how stressful especially if you're undiagnosed and you don't know that you're experiencing autistic burnout because i feel like knowing having a word to describe your experience already makes it so much easier to handle because you're not constantly worrying trying to find answers and you can actually um, look for solutions maybe um, tips and tricks to make it easier and you're kinder to yourself and you can you know join online communities of people experiencing the same thing and um, try to find some comfort um, in that uh, and for, for those who are going through this and don't know what's going on I mean I experienced that because I, I, I think I've been in burnout actually for for a few years and it's kind of like it goes in waves there are times when it's less bad and then it goes back down again and so about four or five years ago I experienced a bad a, a bad wave of burnout back when my partner and I still lived in, in London and uh I was seriously suicidal because I didn't know what was going on that seriously impacted my self-worth my self-esteem and I felt completely alone in the world I felt like I felt completely helpless I didn't even think it would it was you know I, I didn't even consider the possibility of seeking help for it even though I mean I was doing therapy and stuff but I don't know there was sort of a disconnect between how much I was suffering and I don't know I just assumed I was just really bad at life like a lot of us do or that it was all coming from my my uh, trauma and so I put all of my effort into that and I felt so bad about myself because you know I thought I, I was a student at the time I was uh, doing uh, my master's degree in creative writing I had finished my bachelor's degree a year before that and then had been forced by my my mother to jump straight into a master's degree that I didn't really care for in audiovisual translation at Roehampton University if you know you know <laughs> and I had to take you know I had to um, take a student loan for that and stuff and after a semester I realized it was just not for me and I had no idea what I was doing there studying for that degree and I decided to drop out because I just couldn't I physically couldn't finish the year and do the exams and stuff and I know from a neurotypical point of view that might not make sense because you're like but you took a student loan like you owe the bank money at least finish you only have a few months left at least finish it and that way it wasn't for nothing but like that works if you have the type of brain where you can decide to do something even if it doesn't interest you but for us neurodivergent folks autistic or even probably adhd it's nearly impossible for us to do things that we're not interested in and it sounds when you say it like that we don't know much about it it sounds so it sounds like laziness or just not trying hard enough you know but like until you've experienced it you can't know what it's like and so I couldn't finish that master's degree I dropped out I had some I, I had a, a jerk of a teacher um a French teacher in that school even though it was in the UK it was in London she was a French teacher because well the degree was about translation and so um, I was translating from French to English, from English to French. So, my most of my teachers were 
from France initially. And I say that because I don't think she'd have done what she did if she if if she was British. It was very French of her to do that. And I know that because I, I, I lived in France for 20 years, but when she learned, when she found out that I wanted to drop out, and it's even more surprising when you know that I wasn't particularly close to her. I've only, I'd only been studying for this degree for a few months. I was very, you know, very introverted, very, like, I kept to myself a lot. I did not really engage a lot with the other students or my teachers so I was like why are you so invested in this you don't even know me but like as soon as she found out that I wanted to drop out she was like she called me or like I don't remember how it happened but I ended up on a phone call with her and she tried to make me feel bad about wanting to drop out made me feel guilty and then she was like what are you gonna do anyway if you don't finish this I was like Maybe I'll explore creative writing because it's like a passion of mine. And she was so ju so judgmental about it. She was like, oh, well, uh, you're going to do creative writing uh, in English and you're not even a native English speaker. And I'm like, so? <laughs> and I, I don't know, I was just so put off by that phone call. I don't know why I'm talking about this, but just letting my mind wander. And then I did my master's degree in creative writing uh with the open university so that was um uh, to me it was like a little uh little personal i was doing it for myself at the same time i thought it was a little little revenge on that teacher who had said that i wouldn't be able to do a master's degree in creative writing in english because i was french i was like see i did it anyway so I did my master's degree and while doing my master's degree, so it was part-time distance learning, which was amazing because as an undiagnosed autistic person, I really struggled with going to school every day, to a physical school and having to take public transport and having to be around lots of people, mask and stuff, socialize and like having to do like oral exams and things like that things like that it was it was such a huge relief being able to do distance learning study from home and the only times i interacted with my teachers or my well tutors they were called or my fellow students was through was online through writing we didn't even have any like we didn't have video virtual lessons or anything like that it was all like we could speak on through forums and stuff. Like I know a lot of people complained about how you didn't have enough, I don't know, face-to-face -face interactions or something like that. And I never understood why people complained about that. Now I know why, because like for an autistic person, at least for me, that was just the ideal way to study. And I, didn't have any anxiety you know I had the normal anxiety around you know essays and stuff assignments and like you know the anxiety around grades and stuff getting good grades but I didn't have all the anxiety around socializing and stuff that was awesome um and I did it over two years and at the same time I was dealing with some stuff with my family my trauma as I mentioned in many videos um I have pretty abusive parents and so I was coming to terms with a lot of things and I was in the middle actually of going no contact with my parents. I went no contact for about a year and a half and so it was just a very, it was a very emotional time for me. Um, and at the same time I was pushing myself really hard to work. I even, you know, interviewed for student jobs like I actually interviewed for a job in a grocery store and got the job against all odds I think because I the, I was a native French speaker and it was a part of town that had a lot of uh, foreigners and stuff and so it was a great asset and I think that's what they that's why they hired me and also also I masked heavily throughout the interview and so I got the job he he basically said you're hired and 
uh, please come back tomorrow afternoon for a test. So I had like just a few hours of work and I came back the next day. I did that and I never came back. I said, sorry, I found another job that works better for me. And I was like, it was such a horrible experience and nothing bad happened. That's the worst part. But it was just so absolutely stressful. I was completely lost and overwhelmed by the environment, by having colleagues to interact with. I was just completely, I was, I don't know, I was petrified and it was such an awful experience for me. I never came back. And all of these experiences made me feel really bad about myself because I didn't know uh, why I was struggling so much. I didn't know any openly autistic people in my life who could tell me, hey, what you're experiencing is normal. My mind immediately went to, you know, you're, you're, bro you're broken, you're dysfunctional, you're, you'll never be a function functioning member of society, you'll never be able to contribute to the household. Even though my, my partner never, never put pressure on me to find a job or anything like that because he knew how much I struggled and most of the time it was him telling me to take it easy and stuff. I still felt a lot of pressure from society, from my family, and from just wanting to contribute because at the time my partner's work situation wasn't as good as it is today. And so we weren't, you know, we weren't, uh, we weren't poor or anything like that. I'm just, I'm not going to say like, but I felt bad for not being able to bring money home, you know? No matter how much my partner told me it's okay, I don't know, I, I put so much pressure on myself and so I would try and find ways to work that suited me more than being an employee somewhere because I knew that just wasn't gonna work for me because I either messed up all the interviews or like I said, I got hired and didn't last more than a day or two and um, so I knew that it had to be some kind of freelance work. I became quite good at finding work online and like finding freelance gigs for like translation and um, copywriting, copy editing. Um, and then I began to do pet sitting, which is by far one of the one of my favorite um, jobs ever. Unfortunately, I don't do much pet sitting nowadays anymore because we moved to the countryside and so there just isn't as much demand as there was back when I lived in London. Uh, but for a while I did a lot of pet sitting and that was never an issue for me. I did have to socialize a little bit but it was mostly at the beginning when you meet um, the client for the first time and then it was just looking after the animals and obviously when you're looking after the animals the owners aren't here because that's the whole point of pet sitting is looking after the animal when the when their owners are away and i absolutely love animals and so it was i was like i get paid to do this like that's crazy so I did a lot of pet sitting and I also did, like I said, some online gigs here and there. I even started doing uh, fiction work, so like ghost writing and fiction writing and editing, um, mostly on a platform called Upwork. And I taught French as well. And when I think about it, I'm like, how, what, how did I do that? How did I manage to do that? Because that is so unlike me but like I taught French to quite a few students actually for a few years. When I lived in London I did it in person mostly uh, so I would either travel to a coffee shop and do it there or travel to... it was mostly my students tr coming to my house. I rarely went to theirs, it was mostly them coming to mine. It was very 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 stressful for me and also because I tend to be a perfectionist, I would put a lot of pressure on myself to provide, you know, quality lessons that were customized for each student. I did not have like I I made it I I made my lessons custom 
uh, for each student. So that required a lot more work and I wasn't paid that much. I was only getting paid, I think at first I was getting paid less than 20 pounds an hour which is nothing but I thought you know I'm a student stuff like that I don't deserve your money but then the work I was putting into it to make it up to my standards just didn't match what I was getting paid and I was st I still thought I wasn't doing a good enough job and then my students would be like your lessons are great you're an amazing teacher blah blah, blah. and I was like they're just being nice like I, no matter what I did, uh, no matter how I did it, it was never good enough in my own eyes. And I always thought I wasn't, I wasn't doing enough. So I put just an immense amount of pressure on myself and then I would burn out regularly and have to stop everything and drop all of, most of my students and most of my projects and clients and stuff because I just couldn't keep going. And so obviously I'd feel bad about that and feel like even more of a failure. And so so I just, I kept burning out because, you know, I always thought everyone else can do it. So why can't I? I don't know, there was just so much pressure from society and from my family, you know, putting a lot of pressure on myself to, to have a proper job and a proper career, whatever that means. Being ambitious and things like that. So I felt like a total failure most of the time. And of course, I would get burned out. But I would think, you know, there's no reason for me to feel this way because I'm not doing that much. And most people manage to have a full-time job. Sometimes they work several jobs and they still have hobbies and friends on the side. And I can't manage to do any of that. So I must be... A failure that was just the only conclusion in my mind and um, and so I felt terrible and I got really really depressed and things got really dark really quickly uh, I got really suicidal I honestly don't know how I'm still here sometimes I, th I think about it I'm like how am I still here but I made it somehow and so I know how terrible it feels to be in burnout, in autistic burnout, and not know what's going on and feel like a complete failure. And it's horrible and I'm not surprised that it that a lot of people end up taking their own lives because of that. I'm not surprised of it at all, especially if you have, like I said, lots of pressure, lots of people depending on you, and uh, uh, financial pressure, social pressure. It can be too much for one person especially if if they're autistic and they don't know it and they don't know how to accommodate their needs so i my heart goes out to any autistic people out there going through burnout still having lots of responsibilities and stuff who keep getting burnt out over and over again and they don't know what to do about it because there's only so much you can change in your life to accommodate your needs and sometimes just like, you have no choice if you have you know if you have mouths to feed and stuff i feel lucky right now that i don't have any kids to look after i feel guilty for not looking after my cats as much as i'd like to not playing with them not spending as much time as i'd like to because i just don't have the energy so i just can't imagine having kids to take care of having family members that i have to see every day week or or having a job that I need to go to every day with lots of colleagues that I need to interact with like I just I would I would end up being hospitalized I think and a lot of autistic people are and that's how they realize that they're autistic a lot of the time is they reach rock bottom and then they're like I better figure out what's going on <laughs> if they haven't taken their own lives already at that point. This is all very joyful. I promise I'm not in too bad of a mood, even though it doesn't look like it. I'm just completely exhausted and it's making me think about a lot of things. It's making me think about how grateful I am to have the life that I have right now that allows me to take the time to rest and recover. It's making me think of, of all the times in the past when I was in burnout and, and I didn't know about it and I felt like shit. 
when I didn't give myself the compassion and rest that I needed and how things are different now that I'm I have my diagnosis and how grateful I am for that and I feel bad for all the people out there who are going through what I went through. This video ended up being very different from what I had initially planned but I've just got to be honest with my current state and like how much energy I have and I don't have a lot. I don't have a lot like I've been getting, I don't know, nine, ten hours of sleep every night and well, there have been nights when I didn't sleep that much, but for the most part, I've been sleeping nine to ten hours a night. And I don't do much during the day. Mostly, I manage to shower, shower, get dressed, maybe make food, um, clean the kitchen a bit, and then play Zelda, uh, watch YouTube videos, watch movies, make a video once in a while. Uh, edit it, go for a walk once in a while, but again, that just takes so much energy that I have to take it into account in my calculations um, because it takes a lot of spoons and I just, when I'm not too much in burnout, I feel like I, I wake up and I have maybe 15 to 20 spoons for the day and so by the end of the day, usually I haven't used up all my spoons. Right now in burnout, I feel like I wake up with less than five spoons for the day and so I always end up running out by the end of the day. Like waking up around 10, 11 a.m., having, ha having had a full night's sleep, not doing much, I still end up being absolutely exhausted by by 7 p.m. Most of the time I don't have the energy to cook or anything like that so we've been ordering lots of takeout. Now we're you know ordering ready meals, uh, frozen ready meals and honestly it's such a godsend. Like in the past I would have been so, I would have felt, I would have felt so guilty about it because it was, I would have been like no you know you're not you know, you're being lazy, you're not looking after your health, blah blah blah. Like, I would have been so judgmental and now I'm like, thank god it's an option. Like, because the, it, I just don't have the the energy to to make food right now, honestly. Make food twice a day, clean the dishes and stuff like that. It sounds, when you're doing okay, when you're feeling like your normal self, when you have a normal amount of energy, it sounds, you know, it doesn't take, it doesn't take too much. When I was doing okay, when I wasn't in burnout as much as I am today, I, I could do it no problem. You know, I could, I could cook, I could clean and it was fine. It didn't take up too much of my energy because like, like I said, I had, I had many spoons to spare. But right now it's like, I know that if I go for a walk or if I clean the kitchen and I'm not even talking about the rest, okay? The house is filthy. I'm gonna say it. I'm not ashamed to say it because I can't it's not my it's not my fault, you know? I'm doing my best, but I I'm I can't manage to keep the house clean. That's just how it is. Because I just can't keep up with it. So I know that if I go for a walk, if I do yoga if I clean the kitchen, it means I'll probably run out of spoons by the end of the day and then I'll, I'll feel terrible and be exhausted. You reach a point where you have to make smart decisions, you know, and I feel like spending most of my spoons on cooking and cleaning right now isn't the best option. And if I can spare some of those spoons by eating ready meals and get the rest I need and recover more quickly from burnout, then that's that seems like a better option to me. It might not be the healthiest option, but at this point, keeping myself fed is the most important thing. And I know it's not gonna last forever. There is gonna be, you know, I'm gonna have energy again one day, hopefully. <laughs> and I'll be able to cook healthy food again. Not that ready meals are necessarily unhealthy, but you know, it's not as healthy as home cooked meals. But home healthy home cooked meals sometimes are a luxury. You gotta have the energy, you've gotta have the time, and you've gotta have the money for it. A lot of people don't. You've gotta make decisions. And right now, 
ordering ready meals, for me, it's a huge act of self-love. It's saying, I recognize that I'm struggling. I'm willing to do this to spare some of my spoons so I don't end up completely exhausted by the end of the day. I'm probably still gonna end up completely exhausted by the end of the day, but you know what I mean. That's where I'm at right now. It's a little bit scary feeling this amount of fatigue because it makes me feel very vulnerable in the sense that I'm like, if anything happens, like if our land landlady decides that we have to move out, like, I was just watching Meg's latest video this morning and she said that she just got a phone call from her landlord asking them to move out in two months. And I'm like, that's that could happen to us. And if it did, I don't know what I would do, how I would handle the situation. Because, like, I can barely survive day to day. Like, how am I going to, how am I supposed to organize a move? And I know that if I had a job right now, I would have to see a doctor so he would put me off work because I, I wouldn't be able to, I just wouldn't be able to work with the amount of energy I have. Like I know that just recording this video right now, speaking, is gonna, it's costing me lots of spoons, probably more than I have for the day, just doing that. Um. So yeah, I feel very vulnerable, I feel very diminished i don't know if that's a word i can use but i just feel like so limited in what i can do and i feel so grateful that i have an understanding partner and an understanding online community of people going through the same thing who understand because i think just going through this and not being supported and not feeling supported just makes it 10 times worse and that's kind of what i experienced a couple months ago when I visited my in-laws in Switzerland and I talked about it a lot in my travel vlog how I felt um, misunderstood and invalidated in my burnout not intentionally, unintentionally by my in-laws but just, just them not being informed maybe um, not being in the right mindset or whatever so yeah, it helps a lot to feel supported either by the people in your life or an online community. It's a game changer. I know it's just a matter of time until I feel better, but I, I, the, more, the more I think about it, the more I think this is not new. Um, this burnout has been going on for years at this point, at least four or five years. I've just been pretty much since becoming an adult. Life has been too much and not knowing that I was autistic and not accommodating my needs didn't help and so I feel like yeah I've been going through waves of burnout and I'm only now realizing it I can finally take the necessary steps to recover once and for all and hopefully break the cycle of burnout once and for all but we'll see I'm gonna go lay down now because I don't feel like I can keep going with this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.